Welcome students. Today we will be continuing with our discussion on chapter 5 ratio analysis. In the last class we have discussed about the liquidity ratio part. So, today we have to start with solvency ratios. Let us start with that. Now, those who have invested the money for a very long period of time will be more interested in repayment of their principal as well as interest. Five ratios are a part of this section. To start with the first ratio is debt equity ratio. The formula is long term debt upon shareholder funds. Now, shareholder funds is equal to equity capital plus preference capital plus reserve and surplus minus fictitious assets. Now, what is fictitious asset? The miscellaneous expenditure, preliminary expenses part which is now deducted from that reserve and surplus part in the balance sheet. Now, what is long term debt? It is equal to debentures plus long term loan. Now, what do we observe from this ratio? If there is a less debt, it is for more security and solvency. But if high debt is there, we can trade on equity that is, we can take the advantage of low cost debt to make more profit because interest paid is always shown in the P and L account which gives the company some kind of tax advantage and we can earn more on that money. The ideal ratio is 2 is to 1. This is sometime also known as leverage ratio. Another variation of this ratio is debt ratio which is equal to long term debt upon capital employed or net assets. Now, capital employed is equal to long term debt plus shareholder funds. Third ratio under this section is total asset to debt ratio. Now, this ratio is equal to total asset upon long term debts. Next ratio is proprietary ratio which is equal to shareholder funds upon capital employed or net assets. What do we observe from this ratio is higher shareholder funds for financing fixed asset is always a positive sign for the company as it provides more security. Next, you should always write the formula first whenever there are two choices. As in this ratio, we can write capital employed or net asset. So, first you have to specify the formula and then start your answer. The last ratio under this section is interest coverage ratio. The formula is net profit before interest and tax divided by interest to be paid on debentures and long term loans. Now, this ratio tells us about how much times the interest is covered by the profits. It is a security for long term investors. Higher ratio will always indicate safety for long term investor and it will also ensure that there is enough surplus left for the shareholders. Now, let us understand the above ratios by attempting few questions. The first question in this is calculate debt equity ratio. Here we are given total liabilities that is external liabilities 5 lakh and current liabilities are given 1 lakh. So, that makes long term liability 4 lakh right and balance sheet total given is 10 lakh 10,000 in which there are fictitious asset of 10,000. Now, let us start with the solution. The long term debt as I told you is 4 lakh 5 lakh minus 1 lakh 4 lakh and the total asset will be the total of balance sheet 10 lakh 10,000 minus 10,000. What was that 10,000? Yes, fictitious asset. So, our asset will be 10 lakh. Now, shareholder funds is equal to total assets minus long term liabilities or total liabilities. 
yes total liabilities which makes it 10 lakh minus 5 lakh that is 5 lakh. Now, calculate debt equity ratio debt is 4 lakh and equity is 5 lakh. So, the ratio becomes 4 is to 5. Let us start another question calculate interest coverage ratio from the following net profit after tax 60,000 and there is a 15 percent debt of 10 lakh and the tax rate is 40 percent. Now, if the tax rate is 40 percent that means profit after tax is 60 percent right. So, let us start with the solution if net profit after tax is 60,000 that is 60 percent then net profit before tax will be 1 lakh how 60,000 divide by 60 percent into 100 percent makes it 1 lakh. So, the net profit before tax becomes 1 lakh. Now, add back interest in that because we have to calculate net profit before interest and tax. So, how much interest is there 10 lakh into 15 percent that is 1 lakh 50 thousand. So, it makes net profit before interest and tax as 2 lakh 50 thousand. Now, apply the formula interest coverage ratio is equal to 2 lakh 50 thousand divided by 1 lakh 50 thousand that is 1.67 times. Now, this ratio tells us that we are able to cover our interest 1.67 times only. So, the company really should work hard pull up its socks and work very hard because the margin is very less. The next section is activity ratios or you can say turnover ratios. There are 6 ratio under this category first stock turnover ratio, second debtor turnover, third creditor turnover and next is investment turnover or you can say net asset turnover, next is fixed asset turnover and the last one is working capital turnover. So, let us start with the first stock turnover ratio, it is a very important ratio. The formula is cost of goods sold divided by average stock. Now, what is cost of goods sold? Sales minus GP and what is average stock? Opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. Now, high stock turnover means that we are able to convert our stock quickly into sales that is we are very efficient. We are very fast calculating sales on the basis of average stock whereas, a low stock turnover means there is a danger signal. It can mean there can be some obsolete stock or there is inefficiency in converting stock into sales. So, we need to pull up our socks again. Next ratio is debtor turnover ratio. It is equal to net credit sales upon average account receivable. Now, average account receivable means opening balance of both debtor and bill receivable plus closing balance of both debtor and bill receivable divided by 2 because average is calculated by dividing by 2. The next ratio is creditor turnover ratio. The formula is net credit purchase upon average account payables. Now, this average account payable is also opening creditors plus bill payable plus closing creditor plus bill payable divided by 2. Now, there are two more formulas associated with the above two formulas. First is average collection period related to data turnover. The formula is 365 days or 12 months divide by data turnover. Now, this will give you the time period of the collection of the debtor. The next formula is average payment period related to creditor turnover. The formula is almost the same 365 days or 12 months, but divided by creditor turnover because we are dealing with the payment part. Right? So, you just have to remember in collection part we are dealing with debtors and payment part we are dealing with creditor very simple. The next ratio is 
investment turnover or you can say net asset turnover. A net asset is also equal to capital employed this we have told you in the last class. Now, this is equal to net sales upon capital employed. Now, higher turnover will mean we are utilizing our resources very efficiently. The next ratio under this category is fixed asset turnover ratio. The formula is net sales upon net fixed assets and the last ratio under this category is working capital turnover ratio that is net sales upon working capital. I hope you know working capital is current asset minus current liability and net fixed asset as I told you is also equal to capital employed. Now, the last section profitability ratios. The first ratio in this is gross profit ratio very simple gross profit upon net sales into 100. Higher gross profit ratio is always a very good sign for the company as it means more coverage for all other operating and non operating expenses. That is we can have some amount for shareholders always. The next ratio is operating ratio. Operating ratio means the cost of operating the business. Now, this is equal to cost of sales plus all operating expenses divided by net sales into 100. Now, operating expenses will include office and administrative expenses, selling expenses, etcetera. But all non operating expenses and incomes are excluded from this. A low operating ratio is a healthy sign because your operating cost is less, that means your profits will be more. The next ratio in this category is operating profit ratio. The formula is operating profit upon net sales into 100. Now, operating profit is equal to sales minus operating cost. We can also say operating ratio plus operating profit ratio is equal to 100 because both of them added together becomes 100. Next ratio net profit ratio this is equal to net profit upon net sales into 100 where net profit is equal to always profit after tax. Now, this ratio reflects overall efficiency of the company and it is a very important ratio for the investors as they are very much interested how much net profit the company is earning. Next ratio is return on investment popularly called ROI return on investment. The formula is profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed into 100. This ratio reveals the efficiency and the best utilization of money invested by the owners as well as outsiders. We must always see that returns are always more than that interest rate which you are paying to debenture holders and long term loans etcetera. So, students what we have discussed today is solvency ratios that is long term solvency, turnover ratios and profitability ratios. You can also remember that in turnover ratio we are writing sales on the top or cost of goods sold whereas, in profitability ratio we are writing sales below right. So, this part of profitability ratio is discussed today the remaining section of profitability ratio and the questions will be followed in the next class until then goodbye thank you.